Okay, Dr. Oliver, technology is a big thing with kids. What was your first phone like? Our first phone was one with a lever on the side, a handset on a pedestal. It had a ring box of about uh, uh, a foot and a half high and about a foot wide that was mounted on the wall in the front room of our house. Um, everything came directly to and from the operator. Things were really informal in those days. If you wanted to place a call, uh, you went to the phone and rattled the lever on the side and the operator would come on the line and you could ask, uh, what time is the football game tonight? Or was uh, Mrs. Jones new baby a boy or a girl? The operator knew everything that was going on in town and could answer about any question that you wanted to ask about what was going on in the community. So that was your Google. That was our Google. <laughs> uh, 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 an operator who was willing. And this. Well, then you would, if you knew the number, it usually was three digits, and you would say, "Would you ring that number?" If you didn't, you could say, "Could you ring Earl?" <laughs> <laughs> because there were not many telephone subscribers. Yeah. Our number had three digits, but we had a party line. Party line, that sounds fun. And, and the uh, that means that at least one other family, and sometimes two or three other families, were on the same telephone line. That doesn't sound like fun. And uh, they could be listening <laughs> into your conversation. Oh. Uh, you had a different ring uh, to know that the caller was calling you, and it might be... Uh, a short dash and a long ring, or it could be two long rings, or uh, two short and a long. And, and that meant you should answer the phone and not the other party. <clears throat> Going to go through real quick of what you would call uh, famous historical events, and tell, I would like to see where you were at when these events happened, like what was maybe in your mind. So first of all, real quick, where were you at December 7th, 1941, the day that she'll live in infamy, Pearl Harbor? I had an interesting assignment that day. I was uh, 12 years old. Uh, <clears throat> we lived in a, uh, an area of, of the city that was uh, mostly pretty depressed uh, financially. Um, none of us had a electrically operated radios. Most of us had a battery operated radio if we had a radio. And we were very careful of preserving the life of the battery. So we did not listen to it very often. But when the word came out that uh, uh, Pearl Harbor had, was being bombed, um, all of our family and all the families in the city block, and the city blocks then were uh, rectangular blocks, and you could had houses all the way around the block and sidewalks around, so everyone walked around the block. <clears throat> Only one family had a, a really good working radio. Mm. Uh, and they put that radio out on the front porch and all the other families gathered on the front porch of the Higginbotham home, which was directly across, back of our home, across what we call the alley. It was an alley between residential properties. And I was given the designation of being the runner to go to the houses that did not have someone sitting on the porch and tell them the news that was coming over the radio about what was happening. Mm. Now, the communications with uh, uh, Pearl Harbor uh, was not very good. And sometimes the announcers would make a mistake in what they were announcing. At one point, the announcer said that uh, Long Island was being invaded. Long Island was in New York. Um, and people were really frightened. Are we already being invaded on the, the, the East Coast? Yeah. And he came back on later and he said, I made a mistake, said it's Wake Island, and oh. which was a Pacific Island. Sure. Um, so it was an interesting time. And uh, on that day, I, I was very careful to, I got a lot of running in, <laughs> uh, but I was very careful to try to pass on the information about what was happening at Pearl Harbor to the other neighbors. Let's go 10 more years about, where were you when you found out that you were going to go to Korea? <laughs> well, <clears throat> President Truman, uh, just a, a week after the North Koreans invaded uh, South Korea, uh, called to active duty our, 
National Guard unit. I had enlisted in the National Guard while I was a, I'm still a high school senior. I had graduated. I was at that time I was in a school at Oklahoma A&M College in, in journalism school. And we heard the announcement that the president had called to active duty two National Guard units, okay. the Oklahoma unit and the California unit. We knew right then that we were in time headed to Korea. Okay. Did you watch in February 1964, did you watch the Ed Sullivan show the night the Beatles were on? I did. <laughs> what did you think of, I don't know your age in 64, but what did you think about the Beatles in 1964? Well... Our television set wasn't all that great. <laughs> it was black and white. Yeah. Uh, and uh, my impression of them was not all that great initially. Yeah. Uh, they uh, they had long hair and brown <laughs> cap, but they could sing in mm -hmm. a unique way. And uh, Ed Sullivan wasn't quite sure what to do with them either. I don't think, but I did enjoy listening to them. I knew it was. Uh, something different, and I thought these these young men will do something with their lives. Where were you? I think it was in August of 1969 with Neil Armstrong, the moon landing. <clears throat> it was um, in July, okay. 1969. Uh, the night of the moon landing, I was um, at Fort Benning, Georgia. I was uh, in an advanced officers class. Um, we were, um, uh, again, in, in military assignments in, in Oklahoma, back in Oklahoma, but we were in school uh, to learn more about how to do our job better in the military, anticipating that uh, during the Vietnam War, the um, uh, president would again call the 45th Division to active duty as they did in Korea. That did not occur. But on the night of that landing, all of us that uh, were in uh, an officer's uh, building space, an dormitory that had um, all of the people in our class were in different, obviously different rooms. We weren't in barracks, but we were in uh, rooms that an officer's, uh, what they call a bachelor's officer's quarters. Uh, we all gathered in one room on the ground floor that had a small television set, and we watched that moon landing. Uh, way in the middle of the night, early yeah. in the morning, uh, and it was, again, black and white, a very small, grainy yeah. thing, <laughs> but um, we watched it in an officer's club at the uh, BOQ in Fort Benning, Georgia. Interesting. 